So the steers have all shared a fence line for about five days now. Um, so we're going to combine them in together. We like to do that in the front pasture because there's only probably about 100 yards of our electric wire up here. And it just helps everybody get you to the new situation that they're in where in the back pasture there's more like three to 400 yards. And it's a little bit easier to keep an eye on them all day uh, today while they're out front. So we can just do a drive by and check on them when we need to. So what I'm going to do is drag their feeder out into the uh, little lot here behind me by the creek and uh, give them some of this bait feed and call them all in and then just kind of close them up uh, so they're all locked out here in the front. <laughs> This set's pretty experienced with this uh, this routine. Um, the other set, the new set, they're just staying up on top of the hill, uh, being kind of cautious. We're gonna try to lure them down before I dump everything out. Don't worry, it's coming. So just everybody just follows the red bucket pretty much wherever it goes. It makes it nice to load them and lure them into places, but then now we're covered in them. So for us, with the bait bucket, that's why it's so important that we uh, use it. Um, they just come to us, they follow us where we need to go, because we live in an area that's pretty wide open of just corn fields and bean fields, and there's really not a lot of uh, pasture fences around. And if the steers got out, it would they could just basically travel pretty good ways. Um, so we like to be able to make sure that we can lure them in and have them follow us and come when called. And that's why we use that red bucket, it's very visible. Uh, shake on it, beat on it, yell for them. And uh, we just sporadically give them this treat, um, basically makes them come running, they enjoy it. So it helps us control them and be able to uh, maneuver them and uh, keep them where they need to be. Well, they seem to be doing okay together, just rough housing around, establishing their pecking order here. Uh, they'll play around all day. We'll come back and check on them here in a little bit, but everything seems to be going okay for now. Well, it's Thanksgiving morning. We had a bad storm roll through last night, so I'm gonna ride around and check the electric fence in the back pasture. The steers have been together in the front. Everybody's used to the one wire system. Uh, so we're going to turn them back into the back pasture again where they'll probably stay at until around the first of the year. Uh, also, it's going to start getting cold next week uh, down into the 20s. So we're going to start giving them free choice hay instead of just giving them a little here and there uh, because it'll just help out and uh, give them the nutrients that they need. So everything back here looked good. Uh, fence is up. Um, everything shows good on the charger. No branches down or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and get that round bell feeder moved back, bring them a bale down, and then get the steers back here. 
Um, you know, we just had them temporary out front there so everybody could get used to each other and the electric fence system. And so now we'll bring them back here into the back again. So we rolled the feeder out to here. Uh, I'll go up to it, the big country and get the uh, round bale and bring it down and drop it off for them. So my plan is I have a round bale here that I had cut the strings off of and used to give to the ewes when we were weaning lambs to help dry them out because the cows didn't need it. Um, so I'm gonna try to load that into the back of the big country and take it back and dump it and then put the roll, uh, the ring over it so that way they have, uh, we can use this and it's not in the way anymore. So we'll see how that goes. Well, we got it loaded, uh, but I forgot to put the brake on the big country, so that took off rolling while I was trying to push it in there, so that didn't help. But we got it in there. Uh, this bale left uh, a lot of the ring still there um, on the ground, which we'll pick up and just take out and put in that feeder after we get this dropped off out there. Uh, probably do that later on this weekend, just because today is Thanksgiving and uh, I want to go eat. So we'll get this unloaded and so get the steers turned out. Well, that bale's pretty sad because it doesn't even fill about half of it, but we're using it up so that way it's out of the way. Um, the reason why we picked this spot, it's a little further away from the barn than what we like, uh, but because there's not really much here, they'll eat this pretty fast. Uh, this ground's pretty solid. But if you look, here's where the feeder is, and it kind of slopes down, and then you can kind of see the color of the grass change. And all that dark green area is still kind of soft underneath. Uh, you can hear the ground squishing when you're driving across it and walking across it. And so the steers, uh, where they'll be gathered up all around this feeder eating, would tear that ground up down there a lot more than they'll tear this up uh, until the ground gets frozen. And then that's also why in the uh, January on when the ground's frozen or should be, we run them out in the front because they don't tear up the ground as much and it's easier to get the hay to them. So this should work out. Like I said, it's gonna uh, start getting cold and they'll start needing hay from this point on uh, just to supplement them. We don't like pin them up unless it's gonna be extremely bad weather, uh, but we always make sure they have free choice hay uh, from here probably until about the end of March, uh, just depending on the weather and uh, what the grass is doing. 